Welcome to the Stress-Free Dentist Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Block. As always, I want to inspire, entertain, and educate you on the best tools and technologies out there. My goal is to help make your practice and career more profitable, efficient, and most importantly, more enjoyable. And check out all of my nonfiction and children's books on Amazon. And check out the stressfreedentist.com for any upcoming events. And if you're feeling you're a dental professional that's burnt out, or you just feel stuck or want to get to that next level, visit the International Academy of Dental Life Coaches or www.iadlc.com, and we'll get you matched up with a life coach that understands dentistry. I also wanted to thank our amazing sponsor, Equa Marketing. They have helped me and my practice over the years to improve with SEO and website performance. And to find out how you can make your practice dominate in your area, Go to www.equa.com slash MSMSFD to book your complimentary meeting. Again, that's www.ekwa.com slash MSMSFD. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. And today I am joined by Tim McNeely. How are you doing, Tim? Oh, I'm excited to be here, Eric. And Tim is the CEO and founder of Dental Wealth Nation. Uh, dentalwealthnation.com. But uh, Tim, I want to hear all about that. But first, just give me some insight into how you even got, got involved with helping dentists. Well, it all started when I married one, Eric, and uh, met and fell in love with a, a dentist. And uh, you know, at that point, I was really kind of struggling as an advisor and someone you know wanting to help my wife solve her most important financial challenges. I thought it was you know, my job as an advisor is simply look at some investments and do a little financial plan. And, and and lo and behold, dentists have complex financial lives. You've got practices, you've got businesses you're running, you've got the personal side of things. And and I actually ended up finding myself in a job I hated and I couldn't take care of the person I love the most. And so I, I I really started to try to solve those challenges. And now today, that's why we have Dental Wealth Nation. Okay. And what's your background? Are you a, a financial consultant? What would you call yourself? Financial manager? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I've got all the certifications, board certified financial planner, certified investment manager analyst, but but really I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm someone who who solves problems both for myself and for my clients. And that's really the, the genesis of all of this. And actually, uh, I wanted to ask you about, you have strategies for the super rich and you've actually done some groundbreaking research for for entrepreneurs is that right yeah absolutely we just uh, completed the largest study ever done of entrepreneurs 2048 maybe maybe 49 i can't remember the exact number but we we looked at 35 billion dollars of net worth of, of very high achieving entrepreneurs and we did that in conjunction with dan sullivan of strategic coach one of the the grandfathers of coaching out there one of the most respected coaching organizations and so i was privileged to help underwrite the research in that study because we really wanted to understand what are the challenges what are the opportunities and what are entrepreneurs today struggling with and how can they best move the needle forward so they can achieve their most important financial goals? Can you explain what that means to underwrite the research? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm part of a mastermind group, CEG Insights, CEG Worldwide. And, and as a member, that's part of what we actually do with our membership fees is collectively, we're able to do some groundbreaking research, just like the study I just told you about with Dan Sullivan, strategic coach. Yeah, I know. I know of Dan Sullivan. I've read some of his books. It's top notch stuff. Um, okay, tell me about DentalWealthNation.com. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, really, I believe dentists have complicated financial lives, and and I believe a lot of them are being underserved because they're working with advisors who just haven't grown up the way they have. They may have started working out with a buddy when they first got out of college, or, you know, they have a wealth advisor who, you know, is doing some investment managers for them, but they really don't have someone serving as the general contractor of their team and really making sure they're making smart choices throughout their entire life and looking ahead. And, and so that's really what Dental Wealth Nation is. It's bringing a team of experts together so that we can continue to, to move forward and you can make progress on your most important financial goals. And so essentially, do you act like the the quarterback and get the dentist set up with uh, different specialists, uh, depending on their needs? 
Yeah, I, I would say it's really like a general contractor is really what's going on. And, and a lot of times I see the doctors, they're they're working with a whole bunch of subcontractors and they're doing some real estate over here and they're doing some cryptocurrency over here. And, you know, maybe they're doing an IRA over here, but they, they really don't have anyone overseeing how they're building the house. And that's why so often the, the strategies are done haphazardly and they're not done in concert. And that's why things get complicated is they really don't have someone overseeing as the general contractor. Now, do you actually uh, help the dentist with uh, matching them up with uh, the uh, subcontract com- subcontractors, so to speak? Well, I'm going to tell you it depends because a lot of times I get brought in to really check the plans and see what's going on. Right? If people want to know that you know, hey, is what I'm doing actually going to pay off? They 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 have so much financial confusion and fear. And during that process, one of the things we look at is what does your current team look like? Who's your CPA? Who's your attorney? Who who are the people in your life and and are they working? And if you've got some great relationships with those providers, we'll keep them in place. If you say, no, I can't stand this person, then we can bring someone else in. But but we always try to work with your existing team as much as possible. And I imagine it also depends so much on, you know, everybody is so different in their their financial situation, their family situation, what their goals are. Um, I'm sure that that all comes into play. Do you start with a, you know, a good consultation kind of question and answer to find out what the dentist's goals are? Yeah, it, it really where we start. And once again, this comes down from research that I've helped underwrite on the super rich. And when I say super rich, I'm talking about people with a net worth more of half a billion dollars. So so very substantial families. I don't have any clients like that, but I want to learn from them. And one of the things the super rich do very, very well is they have clarity on their goals. They know where they're heading. They know what they're trying to achieve. And they know the gaps that are there. So for me, everything starts with what I call a discovery meeting. It's about a 90-minute process. All I do is ask questions. I want to know where you are now. I want to know where you want to go because we want to really help you fill in those gaps that are there, things that you may not even know about. And so it really starts with a deep discovery meeting. And through that process, we dive into the seven things that I really believe impact success and wealth. Can you tell us what those are, the seven things? Absolutely. The first thing is values. What's important about money to you? Money means so many different things to to so many different people. And we, we really get into your high net worth psychology because we want to know what makes you tick. Then we want to know about the goals that you're driving on, right? What are you actually trying to achieve? From there, I want to know who the most important relationships are in your life. Is it family? Is it friends? Is it office staff, right? How involved in the community are you, right? Who are the people that you're spending time with? After that, yes, we'll get into assets and liabilities and and talk about all that fun stuff. Next, we'll do an assessment of the advisors that you're currently working with. We'll talk about the process. How are you hands-on? Are you hands-off? How do you like to work with advisors? And then lastly, I want to know what you like to do when you're not working. And so really having those seven key areas really creates a, an in-depth profile of you. And it serves as a communication tool, not just for me and you, but it also serves as a communication tool for the other advisors that are in your life too. So you can really bring your team together around your goals because everyone should be working for you and what's important to you. Now, how important would you say for a dentist to start early with something like this. Uh, I know when we first get out of school, there's so much going on. We're out, you know, we just graduated. We're out in the real world. We're practicing. We, we have all the clinical stress. Uh, how important is it to uh, get the goals uh, and all this financial um, clarity uh, earlier, the better? Well, if I could ask you as a dentist, how important is it that I start brushing my teeth and when should I start? What, what would you tell me? Right. Start right away. And the reason is, even if you don't have that team around you, you want clarity of where you're heading. And so if you're just getting started, like like get clear on your goals. Right. And that's why I wrote my book, Dental Wealth Nation, is so you can really see this process and you can implement it yourself. Right. Because oftentimes you're out of dental school. You don't have funds for these things, but you can go grab a book and you can learn this process and you can implement those goals and then mind mapping in really that process on your own. But start with clarity right away, because if you don't know where you're heading, you're going to get lost. Yeah, and we have a very, everything is very clear when you're applying to school, you're going through school, um, maybe what you're doing after school as far as a residency. 
um, everything is kind of laid out for you and what you need to do. Uh, you have to get good grades. You have to pass your boards. There's classes you have to take. It's all kind of laid out for us uh, and and pretty clear. Once you get out of school, however, that's when you know you really need that clarity. And I find it so often, Tim, and I'm not sure if you are experiencing the same thing, that the dentists that I talk to, a lot of them don't have goals written out. Um, and I personally didn't do this until about five years ago. I started working on my short-term and long-term goals. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I think that's one of the most important things that that you can do. I was just working on some of this yesterday. Like I was jotting down my three most important goals and in, in terms of just personal development and growth. And and once again, it's like that that clarity matters because once you have clarity, and so right, and and the important thing to remember is there's no right or wrong answers, right? You get out of school and and maybe you want to own a practice, maybe you want to work as an associate, maybe you want to work for a DSO, maybe you want to go into you know nonprofit work, right? There's no right or wrong answers, but you need to know where you're heading because as you put those blinders on and, and you have some clarity, you also learn what to say no to. And that's just as important as what you say yes to. And that's where those goals really help is it serves as a filter. And the other thing you get to do is you can iterate quickly, right? If you come up with some goals and you start working towards them and you're like, ah, I really don't like this. Guess what? They're your goals. So you can change them, but you need to know where you're heading. Yeah. Nothing is set in stone. You can always, you can always pivot and change. And if something's not working out, then, you know, pivot and change. Um, the, you said something that was so important to my life and learning to take care of myself uh, before I can take care of others. And sometimes that means saying no to others. And that has been such a eye-opening thought process for me because I used to say yes to everyone. And mm -hmm. it was I was getting exhausted, I was getting burned out. And now I feel like when I say no, and I do it nicely, if it's something I just don't have the mental energy for, or if it's a patient or a treatment I don't feel comfortable with, I feel like that's saying yes to myself. Your yeah. thoughts there? Oh, well said. And I, and I love what you're doing with the, the writing in your books and the way you're giving back, because these are strategies. These, these are things we forget to do. And I think it's so easy in healthcare because we often get started in healthcare because we want to serve people. We want to take care of people. But that caregiver fatigue kicks in and it's so real. And saying no is one of the best things you can do to take care of yourself and get that energy to, to recharge so that you actually can continue to, to make a difference. The analogy I love to use is if you're on a plane and that plane loses oxygen, who do you put the mask on first? Do you put it on yourself? Or do you put it on the person next to you? No, you put it on yourself out of enlightened self-interest because you know that if you've got the oxygen flowing to your mask, you can take care of everyone else. Uh, that's a great analogy. And okay, what are you seeing out there? What are some mistakes that dentists are making, uh, some common financial mistakes? Oh man, I, I see everything from, you know, really not having the general contractor and someone overseeing things. and. And they get, you know, touted investments or they get, you know, sold things that actually just don't end up working and they can lose a lot of money through scams. So, so that's actually very real. And that happens quite a bit. Um, the other thing I see is just no comprehensive plan or they're working with advisors who just don't have the technical expertise to serve them well. Like I said, they're, they're working with a buddy or a friend or, 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 or someone, you know, if they've grown up with who's a nice person who has well-meaning intentions. But let's face it, Eric, I could have the best intentions in the world, but you should never let me do dentistry on anyone, no matter how good my intentions are, because I don't have the technical skills to do that. And the same is true in the world of advisory, because there's so many advisors, well-meaning people, they want to help people, but they really don't understand how to drive things forward because they don't have that comprehensive team. And is that where people end up getting scammed is they just don't have that team to rely on and ask questions to, and they end up just making these decisions uh, on their own? Do you see a lot of dentists getting in trouble there? Yeah. I, and I would tell you that has a lot to do with it because if you've got that comprehensive plan, if you know what you're working towards, you're not going to be as inclined to try to take these crazy bets and put all the money on black, so to speak, right? That, that great investment opportunity isn't going to come up. And you're not going to feel the need to, to, you know, go, you know, all in on this thing 
because you actually know you've got a comprehensive plan. And so it actually enables you to, to really manage your risk better. Because my philosophy is you want to take as little risk in life as possible. We've got enough risk in everything else. So, so where can we mitigate the risk factors for you? And the best way to do that is having that comprehensive plan, having a general contractor that's helping you build what's in your head and that life that you're looking for. Okay, what is a virtual family office? Hmm. Th thanks for asking that. And I, and this is something I'm super passionate about. And, and and really, I started building the family office years ago, and I didn't know what this thing was. And, uh, you know, I, really, my, my first kind of understanding of a family office is, is I've grown up in, in the wealth management world. And years ago, I was probably you know, 18 years old or so. I was with my dad driving down to Long Beach, and we we pulled up to visit a client. And he said, Hey, Tim, this is my client's family office. I'm like, family office? Well, what's that? And so, you know, very wealthy family, oil family. And we walk in and, you know, the son and the dad's there and they're working on all the stuff from the family business, the properties that they manage and the oil wells that they had. And, and, and you know, they're managing the property taxes and the payroll of people, right? So it really was a, a family office. And what we see today is that as our wealth grows, as the complexity of everything grows, and the super rich do this so well, is they establish a family office. And really the genesis of it was, you know, the great industrial magnets. They created a lot of wealth and they hired a team of advisors and they plunked them down on some real estate they own. And the job of this team was to manage the family's wealth. And so they would have, you know, the CPAs, they'd have the attorneys, they'd have the real estate people, and they're doing the, the bill pay for the family. And they're, 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 they're taking care of everything that that family requires. Because as wealth grows, complexity grows also. And family offices, they're great. There's just one little problem. For, for mere mortals like you and I, it takes about a three or $4 million payroll a year to run a family office. That's out of the reach for most of us. But what we've been able to do through the use of technology and access to the best of the best experts is we've been able to create virtual family offices where we can bring in those experts on an as-needed basis. Because with technology, you can collaborate with people no matter where they are in the world. And, and I think through the pandemic that we went through, we realized geographic location of the professionals isn't quite as important as what it used to be. And so these virtual family offices are really built around the needs of the family so that we bring in the right specialists at the right time to solve the problems that the families are, are facing. Uh, and one of the other things that you mentioned about the super rich is something called stress testing. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So among the super rich in their family offices, the I it's you know the vast majority of them over the last three years have done a stress test. So what's a stress test? It's like our president Ronald Reagan used to say: trust but verify. And, and this is so important because many of us we've done planning, but we've done it incrementally. Maybe we met with the wealth advisor and did kind of that overarching plan, and then we met with someone in the insurance world and did some insurance policies, and then we met with an estate planning attorney. So, so our planning has been done incrementally, but no one's ever really looked at it comprehensively. And no one knows how all the puzzle pieces fit together. And so stress testing is that process of questioning the underlying assumptions to make sure your plans are going to deliver as expected. Think of it like an annual checkup for your financial plans. I go to my doctor every single year and I get a wellness exam. And you know what? I'm really happy when he calls me back and he says, hey, Tim, we ran your blood work. We did the cancer screening everything's clear, you're good to go. I've never gotten upset at that result because you want to catch the errors before they happen. And now talk to me about, let's get a little bit more specific into dentistry and dental office. Um, let's say I'm looking to create an exit strategy, whether I've got you know two years left, five years left, 10 years left in my practice. Uh, what's, what's an effective strategy for someone looking to exit out of dentistry? It's going to come back to what are their goals? I, I, and I know that sounds silly. It, it, it's not just a silly answer, though. And the reason is because if you're looking to exit, what does that exit strategy look like for you? Do you want to maximize practice value? And are you willing to work back a couple years for another owner? You may love that. You may hate it. You, you may say, no, I really care about my practice and I care about the patients and I I want to give it to another doctor and I just want to move off. I don't want to stay on a couple more years. So you really got to get clear on what's important to you. And once again, if you know your overall numbers and you know that financial plan, 
you may find out there's actually something more important than top dollar for your practice. And maybe the, the freedom and the extra time you get with your family. Or if you've crunched your numbers and you really know, hey, I've got to work the next two years and I've got to you know, grow my practice and grow the EBITDA so I can get top dollar. Well, then that's going to be your exit strategy. So, right, once again, it comes back to what you said. We're all in such different places. It's like me showing up and saying, Eric, what kind of treatment plan do I need for my mouth? You say, Tim, I have no idea. Get in my chair. Let me take some x-rays. Let's let's figure out what's going on. And, and the same is true in the wealth advisory world. But you need that team. You need the experts. You need the right players who can really help you put that exit plan together. But some of the common mistakes I see is oftentimes taxes aren't mitigated properly. There's a lot of room for planning, charitable deductions. You can tie a lot of things together to really reduce that tax bite when you sell. And, and uh, taking it back to the patient, I also, for a new patient, ask them what their goals are for their for their mouth because everyone's goals are different. They may want me to just fix one tooth or they may want a full rehabilitation. Everybody's different. Um, I personally have a very important goal, and that is I need to continue to run my practice. My kids are nine and 11. Uh, so that's another probably 13 years until my son's out of college. Um, I have no idea how much college is going to cost by then. It'll probably be like 120 grand a year. So I factor, uh, that in, you know, my kids, my kids ages and, and their, you know, eventual college, uh, uh, degrees. Um, awesome. Um, Tim, thank you so much. Uh, I want to wrap up with, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you before. I usually do my two final questions of how do we get a hold of you and what advice do you give for, to young dental professionals? But um, you and I share the love of uh, poodles. I have a mm -hmm. mini poodle, uh, my my bandit, my bandy cakes. Uh, you also have a poodle, but also uh, is a therapy dog in your wife's office. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is where kind of the, the creativity of life kicks in. And this is one of the things I love about being a wealth advisor is if you figure out those goals, you figure out how to have more fun in life, too. And so for my wife and I, like getting a dog and getting some poodles were so important to us. Right. We don't have kids, but we, we wanted to fill the house with little noise, a little bit of excitement. But we also realized that if we brought a dog home, like her going to the office every day and leaving the dog home. Like, that's not a really nice situation for the dog. So we just started exploring, like, what can we do? Like, like how do we create a situation where we can actually, you know, have the dog around and, and, and serve others through it? And, and the more we explored it, we discovered therapy dogs. And, and therapy dogs, there's a certification process that you can go through. Um, we did it through Therapy Dogs International, where you really do a lot of the training and obedience work. And we find that the studies actually support lowering blood pressure and patient anxiety, like major benefits for having a dog in the office. And, and for us, we chose the poodle because it's hyperallergenic. It doesn't shed. Very smart, very trainable. And you can dress them up really funny and put bows in their ears and paint their toenails. And the haircuts are just ridiculous. So, so that's why we love poodles so much. But, but through that process, we actually created a tax deduction. So the, we have a line item on our taxes that says therapy dog because that dog is in the practice all the time patients love it we use it in the marketing patients come in asking where's where's birdie can we see birdie where's the dog uh, do you say birdie or bernie uh birdie like a flying bird birdie oh birdie gotcha um how does it work does birdie stay in the like back office until a patient wants to see birdie or is birdie just like hanging around in the waiting room yeah, no, there, there's multiple ways you can do this. For us, what we found works the best is in my wife's office. She has a, a crate and she'll leave the leave Birdie in the crate. And then when patients come in or, or she'll let it roam free with the, the doors in her office closed. So, so Birdie's in her space. And then if patients come in asking to see Birdie, we'll bring the dog out. And so because some pa patients do have a fear and they don't want to see a dog, but we find the vast majority absolutely love it. And so they'll actually come in and then we'll bring Birdie in. They'll do a little visit, give her some treats. We've taught Birdie a couple of tricks, like, you know, bowing for him and shaking hands and right. It just creates a more fun experience because oftentimes, as you know, there's a little bit of fear of the dentist. And can, I mean, this could be a whole other podcast just about Birdie, but can Birdie actually go into the operatory uh, and can the patient actually like, or has that become like a sterility thing? Like, um, 
Yeah, okay. now, now, now we're beyond my pay grade. So my, my wife has a very unique practice. She does dentures and partials and laser phrenectomies and tongue ties on infants. So she's the no teeth dentist. Uh, and, okay. and so it's a little, little different than a general dentistry practice. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not sure how that would work, you know, actually coming into surgical operatories. Yeah. Um, interesting style practice. Um, okay, let's let's go back to my two final questions. How do we find out more about what you're up to? And then la- and you can leave an email, phone number, a website. Uh, and then the last question is what advice would you give to the young dental professionals out there? Yeah, so super easy to get a hold of dentalwealthnation.com. You can pick my book up on Amazon. It's called Dental Wealth Nation, Seven Steps to Decrease Taxes, Increase Impact, and Leave Your Thriving Legacy. So so super easy to find. You can call me, text me, 818-730-2000. So, so really easy. I'd love to serve you, help you out. Any questions, anything on, on clarity, or if you just want to know if you're on the right track, happy to serve you. And in terms of new advice for dentists, once again, I'm going to come back to, to where we started. Clarity on goals, right? You need to know what you're heading towards, what's important to you. And and when you're starting out, I'll remind you too, you're not going to be really clear on a lot of this stuff. It's going to be hard to figure out because you're not going to know what you want. So pick something, start heading towards it. And if you have to change it, change it, but do it quickly, right? Don't stay stuck to a goal that's not working longer than you should, right? If, if If you're heading towards that thing, if you find it's not connecting with you, if it's not filling you up with passion, if it's not, if it's not an elf, easy, lucrative, and fun, you might want to consider another goal and have the courage to do that. I iterate quickly because the faster you do that, the faster you'll find the right goals for you. Awesome. Great stuff. Again, Tim McNeely, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks again for listening to the Stress-Free Dentist podcast. And don't hesitate to get in touch with me at info at the stressfreedentist.com. And if you haven't already, please subscribe on your favorite platform and leave us a review. Until the next episode, I'm Dr. Eric Block, the Stress-Free Dentist.